minutes. <laughs> I don't believe you. <laughs> I didn't have it switched on. No, I didn't. Yeah. It were on, but it, it, it's recorded. <laughs> <laughs> no, you you have a better memory than me. Start again, where, your name and where you were born. They called me Doris Porter and I was born down in Lampit Lean. I do. Yeah. And then another move up to Lane End. I was moved into a house there. And opposite us, there was a, a row and the little house. Every morning, when kids came up crying because I had no breakfast, she was the head there with a plate full of dishes and bread. So that the kids could help themselves to a slice of bread. Strange, isn't it, them days? You see, in them days, the, the brothers had no brother to for a chocolate loaf of bread. My mother baked her own. But in that days, <coughs> if you didn't bake a loaf of bread, it cost two pence. Uh, two pence for a loaf. Mm -hmm. So there were hard, hard times, Doris. Very hard, very hard. And I was the monitor at school. <coughs> One of the monitors. And they was a stand by a radiator. And when kids came in from down the bottom of Lampet Lane, and they was coming, and all they had on their feet was a pair of old sand shoes and some socks. And when they came in, they took them off, if it were raining, took them off. And if you saw the socks, there's hardly any feet in. So, on the radiator, we had warm stuff. We collected it all round with a bit of plenty. And we put a, a pair of warm socks and some old shoes on before they went to the class. They were very hard times, very hard. And with no buses, no buses at all. And then, eventually, new new wards from Rothwell sort of opened. And then, foxes followed. So they, we got a bus service. Before that, we used to walk to Loftus Gate, get on a tram, and ride into town. Either that, or you walk up Sunday Hill to town. And then coming back with all your girls and whatever you bought, they used to get off at Loftus Gate and walk down home. They won't do that today, will they? You what? <laughs> oh, God, no way. But to us, you see, that was a natural way of living because nobody had those. Everybody was poor. No television. They, they all worked at pitch, you see. No television. No, oh, oh, oh no, I. You were lucky if you had a radio. Only that they had, like, could afford it as a radio. Otherwise, nothing. What did you do then? Well, we used to have to play out while it was light and then go in while I was a reader. I loved books, so I was all right. You see, I could read, but there was nothing. And we used to play a, a, a game called Kick Out Can. And that was in the middle, and they used to kick it out. 
However, it was a scandal. It was there to the left, go in the middle. And that's how I was played. Skipping? Did you skip? Hmm? Did you skip? I went skipping up, right across the main road. You see, there were no buses. I only had a bike. And so, skipping up was from side of one side of the road to the other side. What was it made of, skipping rope? Was it a clothesline? Sometimes it was, and sometimes it was a... Uh, neither was it made of. I forgot now. Were you stopping out clothesline? It could be that. <coughs> and that's what we used to do. That's, that was flying out in summer. In winter, no. Bed early. In winter, you just knocked some doors and shot for development. <laughs> You didn't get any sweets or not like that. Oh. If you were lucky, as your mother had old, she'd give you a penny to go to pictures. And we always called it clog every web. And it was on the picture house. But you see, one half was a, <coughs> it was a clock manufacturer, the other boat, and they it bit paid off to us, it be it be built. And the other half was a market gardener called of <coughs> my wait a minute. Jakes. It was called Jakes and he, he put other half to and they made a picture house of it. Now if you do Paddy for pictures, you were well off. If you gave me beside that paddy, you used to go across the road to Mrs. Smooth, where she had her orchard. And for Abney, if she was generous, she'd give you three pairs. If she wasn't, you got two. And how, how lucky were you? I was lucky because I got a penny for pictures and they ate me for, for food. Now, if you weren't going to the sweet shop, you'd only hate me. And it have took you ages to decide what to spend it on. Because you, you wanted so many things and you'd only hate me. But Amy, in them days, is like a couple of bob today, I should say. Can you remember any of films? Oh, no. No, I can't. But the, 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 all the black and white, I'll tell you that. And the uh, right old... Silent? Silent films, yes. I can't remember how to write them. <coughs> so tell us a bit about school, when you started and where. Well, I started here at Lane's End <coughs> when I was five. And I told you, oh, what teacher? Do it again. Tell us again, teachers. You have to give me time. Yeah, all right, uh, no, right. It's uh, my fault for not having it running. Yeah, then, what they called her now. She lived up top of Baker Lane and they had a, a shop. Mm. Go back to that then. And, so, then uh, and then next one, what well, was England? And then we were Mrs. Al for the last one. And we were three different ones, like that. And then, when you finish the year, 
you move over to class one. Mm -hmm. What lessons did you have? Eh? Hey? What lessons? What lessons did you have? We did have our lessons. We used to play. What, what we had to do was just draw the little things and see if it were right. I'll <coughs> make the little things and fit it and they say if they were right or wrong. But for lessons, you see, you had them in the. <coughs> He said he had nothing in the first one, because that was what they called the baby class. In the second one, he'd have a bit more to do. But in the third one, she was about to do, try and do was it, a drawing, writing, and that sort of thing. Ready for moving into class one. That more or less, the three first three were sort of getting you settled in for school. When I went, my mother left me and I came home. <laughs> I followed her home. <laughs> well, I minded that, yeah. <laughs> so when you got a bit further up at class, what did you do then? Well, <coughs> after Edwards, I moved with the one. And that was when we started writing and added up and doing arithmetic and that. And then you move over then to the next class. And it went like that. And when you were 12, you were doing geography and history and that sort of thing. What about religion? There was no religion only on the morning, first thing on the morning, with hymns and a, a prayer, and that was it. Your, your, <coughs> your religion was all to do with your, your own self. And I was a chapel goer. So you went to Methodist? Mm hmm. And then they ended up as a Zionist. Yeah. So this is the two Methodist churches in Stanley? There used to be one down Boston Boat, one at the top of uh, Long Causeway, and one up there, uh, what they call that road? Lee Mount. Lee Mount. Lee Mount. And I think the usual one at Lee Moor. <coughs> I think they were there. There's the usual one at quite a few. And the only one church. And now it's gone. Sad. Sad. Very sad. Very sad. I think it's awful. But our Christmas is there, our mother is there, the kids have got Christmas there, and they were married there. So. So, right, you left school, what do you do then? What 14. Oh, go on. At 14, I left school. I went to work in Leeds at John Lawrence. I was to catch a train at 7 o'clock on the morning. It came up from Catterford. And that took you to take it into Leeds just before 8 o'clock. And then you took a hurry up and get to work for 8 o'clock. And for 8 o'clock till 6 o'clock, apart from an hour for your lunch, I got eight shilling a week. And that was your wage. On a Saturday, you work from eight till twelve. 
And then you got the 12 8 out of Leeds back home. And if <coughs> some nights, <coughs> some nights when you got to about 15, you had to work over while 8 o'clock. And when you did, there wasn't a train while quarter past nine. So we were to hang about in Leeds. And if you had any coppers to swear, you used to get two pounds of either chips or scraps. And you used to share them between you, because it, was, it might have only coppered up for a evening. <coughs> and we caught the A15, and it only went to the officers. So we had to wait then while we were connection for Sandley, the Castleford woman. And we got off there and we got home at night and it got down for 10 o'clock. And that was 15 shillings a week. I'll just have a break for two minutes and put. At first. <coughs> I worked at job Boris, and what I had to do, you know the man's jacket, we used to be lying on the man's on the front, ready for the next one. Oh, my piece then. And then later on, I put on collars, and we had patterns for them. And whatever colour, kept whatever show came in, we had to get a colour to match. And we got colours and cut them and pass them on to the shower. Oh. You didn't fancy lamas then? No. No, I like leaves working there. I worked there a long time. <coughs> and if we went to Wakefield, we caught a bus, a, 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 not a bus, we walked to Loftus Gate and got on a tram and took it into Bullerwick. And then when he came back, he took it the same back as well. And there are only chums on the top road from Leeds to Wakefield. What were they like? Bit rough. <laughs> That's, there were seats and the room that made it different. You don't remember how much it cost you to go to Leeds? No, I know how much it cost to Wakefield when the sat of the it costs you double return. It's nearly five pounds now. <laughs> I know, I know. Double return we got. <coughs> right then, this is a bit personal, you don't mind, dear. No, go on. How did you meet your husband? He lives across the road. Huh? <laughs> I'm confused now. And you see, what are your school about? I, the go I see. Go on, start again, Doris. I'm up that up. He lived across the road. There were a row of five houses across the road from us. And he lived in the second one from the bottom. But you see, we used to go about, we were about 16, going about for a group, in a group, well, meeting lads and that sort of thing. <coughs> now, when his brother got married, he was a groomsman, and my cousin got married, I was bridesmaid. So we met after the ceremony. And then from there on, 
or friendly, but nothing else. So what made you fall for him then? Well, to be your perfect. That's nice, yeah. And I couldn't wish for anybody better. It was a very good husband. But <coughs> it was a blacksmith at the pit. So we had much money. And he used to pay straight up, never kept a penny, penny to the shallow. And I would sit there every Friday with pencil and paper, rent, milk, food, and that's how we lived. Which pit? New Market. What was his name, Doris? Herbert Hampshire. Right. So you went on and got married? Mm-hmm. And when he died, the collector for him, he always wondered, this about the, the end. So with the money the men had collected, I had gates for sale. And they're still there? I'm still there, yes. And it's been really dead, 40 years. And you obviously had a family? Pardon? You had a family? Well, I'm Maureen, I'm Brenda, and I'm Margaret. All girls? No girls. Oh, that's super. So we're the very, and it was very good to you, wasn't it? Mm. Definitely. But the, to those who were told them days, hmm? kids had to behave. Oh, well, it wasn't like that, so close in life was our house. A play game with them, her out, wouldn't they? Mm. You know, like m Monopoly and that sort of thing. It never gave with them. Joy. No. It never went to a loser or the later. And then he used to go just at, maybe just Sunday night or just Saturday night. But he never had any boy than two pipes. My dad, my dad didn't drink either. He used to, um, he used to show us drawing. He was really good drawing and how to make kites and Things like that, you know. He did a lot of play, like she said. Mm. I'm just saying he did a lot of playing with us, like you've just said. Mm. Mm. And he used to draw a lot, didn't he? He yeah. was a good drawer. Mm. He used to draw for a lot for him. Did he go to chapel? No, no. But the kids did. They did. So what would be a typical Sunday, Sunday then? A typical Sunday, I get up in the morning, <coughs> cook it, make an egg for breakfast, kids are going to Sunday school, coming home to yours of pudding, potatoes, carrots and cauliflower. And then, if I were, <coughs> if I made a sweet, there was sweet to finish, because I baked a lot. And I made all sorts. You had to then, didn't you? Mm -hmm. It was all on baking then. Mm -hmm. I did when I had my family. So other than beyond, did you have a coal fire? Yes, we had a coal fire. And uh, that had to be cleaned out every day, and floors cleaned out 
every day, every week, to get each other up for breaking. Yeah. Hey. Good days. She she wouldn't stand at my dad and uh, and, and shoved loads of embers underneath the oven to get because she was doing the arch puddings, right? And when she opened the oven door, they were on fire and she'd throw them out into the street. Do you remember that? Huh? When my dad had made the oven too hot and it was red hot inside and your Yorkshire pudding tins were on fire nearly. Mm -hmm. I've seen the, I've seen them being on fire. <laughs> Go outside, throw them down while it cools off. Yeah. Have you ever had chimney a fire? No. No, was it? No. But <coughs> we, had, we, had, <coughs> we had a coal fire. It was nice and warm. Yeah. But he was a blacksmith, I bet. Mm. But you still worked though, didn't you? Yes, it worked there while they... No, I mean you, you still worked. We'll just have another ten minutes, because I don't want to tie you out. Right. I okay. always come again if you want. Okay. Can't I? Because otherwise, it, it, you know, it, just tell us a bit about presents you got for Christmas. Which was Christmas? Christmas. This time? No, no, when you were younger. Oh, when you were young. When you were. <coughs> your brother and dad, they had no money. Because the father worked a bit as well. <coughs> You used to get apple and orange and an old penny. And then you got a chocolate figure and that was your highlight. That was it. I remember getting one chocolate figure. It was a dress in uniform. All right. <laughs> no, no. But when we did that bother about things like that, you got something and that was it. And you knew that they had the money to do ourselves. That no penny was worth a fortune. Mm. It bent it a lot to you, a no penny. So I'm interested in Dr. Bottomley. Oh, I was smashing. It was lovely. Don't you remember him? Mm, I do. Very well. Yeah. He was a good doctor. I thought what he did for me. Something that nobody else would do. Because I had air and then <coughs> a year or two months after. And I bled you. So they wouldn't pay you any money. They were too close. They would say, give you a little allowance, you see. So what he did, he, said, he asked me, he said, Did you get your allowance for the, the same baby? I said, No, they wouldn't give me it. He said, It was too close to the first. Right, he says, I'll make you a sick note and you get something that way. And he did. Yeah. It was marvellous to us. So do you remember Dr. McLeod? Dr. McLeod, he was trying to both to work. And he was like keen. I did have him. He, he was my doctor, not mine. It was my brother's doctor, but he, he, he retired, you see, most of the kid that took <coughs> with him, and then my clothes were uh, gay dolls, so he retired, and bottle of took over, and then others came after. Uh-huh. I, I liked Bottomley a lot, didn't. 
Oh, well, I did. Oh, I did. Mm -hmm. uh, to oh, but do you remember Dr. Tucker? Oh, Dr. Tucker oh. lived down on Abbott's Road. Mm. But it was a well, it was a it was called with hat and gloves and all that, so it wasn't my doctor, but it was my husband's doctor. But it wasn't my type at all. No. So you went to Outwood doctors? I went to Outwood. Well, my mother had us at Outwood when we were kids, so I kept it up. So, did Dr. McLeod have a motor? You'd hear him coming up motorbike. <laughs> he came on a motorbike. <laughs> Where Bossover came in a car, but he, he came on motorbike. Mm -hmm. But they said he was a very good doctor. I've had my mother's mother say he was a very good doctor. He was keen. No messes about, but it was good. What's your favourite hymn? Favourite hymn? Wait a bit. I think it's right and beautiful. Uh, right. Do you remember any... Ministers at Methodist Church. Any what? Any at ministers at Methodists? <coughs> no, then. <coughs> you see, it was local, so it was through, like Mr. Ashworth and then, didn't they? They, were, they did it. Right. Mr. Ward. Little Mr. Ward, wasn't they? Mm. Little Mr. Ward. Ephraim. Hmm? Ephraim, didn't they call him? Mr. Ah, Ephraim Ward, Ward. Mm. yes. Mm. It was, it was old, wasn't it? Mm. He remembers that old pit at bottom of Lane, does Ephraim. Oh, yeah, deep drop. Deep, deep drop, mm. yes. He used to tell me about it sometimes. Can you remember any shops in Stanley? Yes, they were Granny Sturdy. Tell us where the worst was. Bottom of Lane End. It's those as a shop now. That were, that was Granny Sturdy. And then we got Gills, the Fairland Road, and what call it. Rook's Nest? Going to Rook's Nest. There were gills, and they sold all groceries. A shop at the corner, she didn't use it as a shop. She made ice cream into an old... Now then, what were they? Of old places, or probably against us, and she made ice cream there. And then she also come around with a arson trap and sell it. But she never opened that place as a shop. Now I've told him, Mrs. Sturdy, well up along Causeway, there were loaves. One half of their window was veg and fruit, other half was sweets. Next to them was butcher Billy. And your mother used to send you for six pence a fry, which consisted of uh, liver, uh, heart, kidney, and a little bit of meat. But my mother was a good cook, and she was like, you have to put it into summer. Double ladies in winter, and she almost made a nice good gravy. Did you ever have rabbit? I've never had rabbit. We had a rabbit, we used to go Sunday night away from market, shilling, 
for rabbits. I used to like the rab rab rabbit gravy and vegetables and pudding. Yeah, was pudding. Yes. Do you remember Steele's butchers? Doctor Steele, uh, uh, butcher, butcher Steele. Mm. Yes, yeah. he lived at Wall Lane End, above the post office. Mm. And that you'll be there today. Mm -hmm. That was Butcher Steele. We've got some photographs of him. Have you? Mm. Ah. Yeah. I think he was laying a bit, Andre. Where did he live? He was. I thought he was. They had, a, they had a bike shop as well, making bicycles. Top at Long Causeway there. Right. Got a picture ah. of that. Well, I wouldn't know because we did go very far away from home. We know she's only lived in three. I think is this. No, she lived in three houses. Right, Marshall Street up by Post, Chapel Street, which is Chapel's not there anymore. Halfway up Long Causeway, and this one. So she's. Do not move far, has she? Did you have a chemist? Comic. Chemist. Chemist. Uh, yes, down on the bottom road. I have Dr. Tucker's. Mm. A chemist there. Otherwise, you wouldn't have one. Mm. Mr. Butterfield? Hmm. Yes, it's a good one. Ah, then what the day is. Is there all you can think to ask your man while we're here? Uh, hmm? I don't know. I mean, she's, she's just got that many things know. that she knows about, you know, yeah. people and, and places. I don't think you're going to be able to answer this, but can you remember any skipping rhymes? I know what. Skipping rhymes when you used to skip. You know, when you sang, when you skipped. You used to skip, huh? Yeah, but when did you used to sing when you were skipping? Did you sing nursery rhymes or things like that when you were skipping? Mm, I don't know, I can't remember that. We did, but I can't remember. No, I can't remember. But you have sometimes two ropes, didn't you? Yeah. Wait a bit, my do. Wait a bit. I know we used to do so much and then roll out. Oh. But I can't remember what we sang. Mm. You played kick out can, mm. didn't you? You played kick out can. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Just tell us about that because I'm not sure whether that was it first bit or not. What? He wants to know about kick out can because do you know when you were talking about it before, he doesn't, re he doesn't think he's got it on his machine. Wants to know about kicking out can. Ah, oh, well, <coughs> all lads just get around, you know, and they put a can right in the middle of them. And the one man, there were, <coughs> they used to pick, and he used to be, he kick it out, and wherever it landed, you were next. They used to fly up and down, run around. Tell him about bonfire night. Bonfire night? Mm. Well, kids, bonfire night. Well, two, two of us, we used to put potatoes in the oven. <coughs> Make a tin of parking and a tin of treacle stuffy. And our kids used to bring a stool and sit all round us like that. And then they used to handle the potato off and be a bit of butter. And then they used to follow with parking and taffy. And that was a bonfire night. We lived in kind of a yard. You know, I'm just saying we lived in kind of a yard, so all the families, you know. Well, we lived in a yard, or there were, <coughs> there were dexters, and uh, Paul Sandish, mm -hmm. 
Jean Rob and uh, Frank. The garden board and their violin and them. And then next door to us, seniors, mm -hmm. and me, mm -hmm. and they all used to go all around with her. And then <coughs> my husband and another one, Uncle Sal, mm -hmm. used to light all fireworks for them. Right. right then. I that we had some good times. Mm.